Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to each of the witnesses. Uh, Ms. Newland. As you know, in January of last year, the Senate voted on my legislation to impose sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And it did so before Russia had invaded Ukraine. When the Senate voted on those sanctions, President Zelensky publicly urged, even begged, the United States Senate to pass those sanctions. And President Zelensky said, passing those sanctions then were the last chance to prevent Russia from invading Ukraine, the last chance to prevent Russian tanks rolling into Ukraine. Was President Zelensky wrong? Senator Cruz, uh, like you, I am, and I think the administration is very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. I personally, um, having been involved along with my boss, Secretary Blinken, in all of those negotiations with Russia to try to prevent this war in December, do not believe that had that Nord Stream 2 been cut off in January, that would have been decisive for Putin. It was important that the day the war began, the Germans cut the pipeline, as did the rest of the Europeans, but he was bound and determined to go into Ukraine, as you know. So you believe Zelensky was wrong when he said stopping Nord Stream 2 was, was the last and best way to stop this war? I don't think it would have stopped Putin, and, you know, I And, and I, when, I the wish, government, I, when the government of Poland similarly said, begged the United States Senate to pass those sanctions and said, this is the last and best opportunity to stop Russia from invading Ukraine, you believe Poland was wrong too? I do not believe we would have prevented this war had the Europeans acted faster on Nord Stream 2. I wish it were the case, but I don't think it would have stopped. Okay, well, let's talk about how the war is going. And I know that you and I both agree that it is important for Russia to suffer a crushing defeat. Putin is a KGB thug, and he's committed to undermining our interests and our enemies across the globe, including in particular China, are watching carefully what happens in Ukraine. The Iranian regime is watching as well. And Iran is committed to doing everything they can to ensure Putin's victory. They're supplying Putin with resources, especially drones which are devastating Ukrainian civilians and military assets. Meanwhile, the Biden administration, which waived the sanctions on Nord Stream 2, the last and best hope of preventing the war, right now today continues to be obsessed with a new nuclear deal with Iran. Iranian officials say talks remain ongoing while administration officials say they remain committed to diplomacy, but not right now. I'm deeply concerned that this administration, even in the middle of a war, is subordinating the need to counter the Russian-Iranian alliance to its own partisan political preferences. For example, this administration has dropped the general UN arms embargo against Iran. This administration has made Russia our intermediary in nuclear talks with Iran. This administration has issued sanctions waivers, allowing the Ayatollah to become Putin's nuclear client. This administration has withheld weapons for Ukraine to target Iranian operatives in Crimea, helping Russia launch drones. And this administration has avoided using relevant sanctions authority against Iranian banks, facilitating the transfer of drones to Iran. As a result, Iran has been able to dramatically boost Putin's war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, America and the American taxpayer are sh shouldering the burden of assisting Ukraine while the Biden administration is greasing both sides of this war. Let's talk about Iran's supply of drones to Russia. The Biden administration made an immediate decision to go to the United Nations and drop the general UN arms embargo on Iran because they say it was required by the original JCPOA nuclear deal. Biden officials say 
Part of the embargo dealing with drones is still in place, but even that measure will expire this fall pursuant to the JCPPA. I believe the Biden administration should immediately go to the UN, invoke our snapback authority, and keep the embargo in place. Do you agree? Or do you believe we should allow the UN arms embargo on Iran to expire and allow Iranian drones to continue to go to Russia and be, be used against the people of Ukraine? Time of the Senator is expired, but please answer his question. Thank you. Senator Cruz, you are absolutely right that Iranian drones are fueling this war, and that is why we have taken uh, many, many increased sanctions measures against Iran over the last uh, couple of months, including against the IRGC Guard Corps Aerospace Force, the Quds Force Aviation Industry, the Shahid Aviation Industry, Russian Aerospace Forces. The have you stopped the drones? Uh, we have not stopped the drones, and this is part of the problem. Um, but we know what Iran looks like, and we also know who Russia's friends are, Iran, North Korea, and Hamas. Um, as you know, we are not currently in active discussions with Iran. Um, you know, it is not prepared to, to take these negotiations seriously right now, and we have many of the same concerns that you have, but I look forward to speaking with you in a separate setting about our larger strategy vis-a-vis -vis Iran. I think this is probably not the appropriate setting for that. Thank you. Senator Coons. Thank you, Chairman Menendez, uh, and thank you, uh, all three of you, for your service and for your work to um, continue to help lead um, the efforts of our administration in combating